Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In. I'm a crackhead update. I just came from outside and the super crip walked up. Man, he dressed, he got all blue. He got a blue cap on, blue t-shirt, blue short pants, blue socks, some blue Converse. And on the back of his t-shirt, he got West Side. And he got a blue do-rag on. And some blue glasses. The Super Crip. Man, before we can even get started, man, he he walked up and started hitting everybody up. Dude, looking at him crazy, I guess. I don't know about any couple more guys were standing around here. These are old guys. They don't know nothing about no Crip sign. He said, yeah, man, I was hitting y'all up, man. Y'all don't know that Crip Talk, man. I got to teach y'all some Crip Talk, man, where y'all can talk to me. And one guy told himself, he said, man, he, he knew what apartment he lived in. He said, man, you the guy who lived with that deaf lady, huh? He said, your old lady deaf? He said, no, man, my old lady deaf. He said, well, she's speaking sign language. He said, no, man, that ain't no sign language. That's Crip Talk, man. She be talking to people, man. Y'all just don't understand that crip talk, man. She be hitting people up, man. Oh, my baba, man. Oh, my baba. She ain't deaf. Oh, my baba. The man can't lie. He got a deaf old lady. So he knows sign language. That's how he talked to her. And uh, it's no lying sight, man. This man here is the super crip. He, he won't stop lying. Eventually, though, he going to run into the wrong person. Tell him one of his crip lies. And they're going to touch him up. The first thing come out of his mouth is he's set tripping. Well, it's just a matter of time before it's going to catch up with him. I ain't seen it yet. Everybody who tell these fantastic stories will always come to an end. He already exposed that his wife is, his old lady is deaf. I don't know if that's his wife or not. But he lied about that. I can tell the guy was telling the truth because he immediately said, Man, I'm finna go back to my house and play on my PS5, man. I got to play on my PlayStation, man. Y'all ain't got one there at y'all house, man. I got this one to come from, from Los Angeles. Y'all always talking that California shit. Ain't nobody in Dallas giving a shit about no California. California was so good, why you got your hunger ass over here? They got all them homeless, hungry, broke motherfuckers in California. That's my crackhead update. Y'all know what it is. Get your shanks out and let's ride. Well, this is a circa 1977. And I've said this before. Sometime uh, the ward would come in the inmate dining room with his wife and kids. And they would get a tray, just like inmates go through the serving line and sit at a table and eat. Sometimes they eat with inmates or sometimes they eat by themselves. But they would eat the inmate food. Cat psychology behind that was to show inmates, if my family, who is free, can eat anything they want, they can come in this dining room and eat this food. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for you. Now I got to give it to the man. He made sure inmate food was cooked. I mean, these guys, the inmate cooks, when we be coming through the serving line, a lot of the cooks, they be standing on the serving line. And they would say, hey, man, try this right here, man. I cook this. Man, I, I got to get everything at Ramsey tasted good. If you didn't have money, you were still wasn't going to go to sleep hungry there. Man, they feed good. You can eat much as you want. Had a sign up there, eat all you want. Now, take all you want. But eat all you take. You cannot leave nothing on your tray but bones. Nothing else can be left on that tray. No food. You better put it in a plastic bag, put it in your pocket, do something. You ain't going to go up there and throw it away. They didn't allow no food being wasted. And uh, also, during that era, the warden had inmates virtually raise their kids. Inmate had power. He drive the kids to school, pick them up from school. Probably taught his kid uh, how to ride a bicycle. He was taught that by an inmate. 
inmate lived at the warden's house. And, and the warden kids knew, like, sometime in one hole, we go over there and work around the warden's house. Uh, they give us a break. And uh, these kids been around the inmates so long till they know your name. They come up and talk to you. His little son will come up and talk to you. And he made his kids say yes, sir, and no, sir, to inmates. Well, you inmate it, oh, free. You get the kids were respectful. They say yes, sir, and no, sir, to the inmates. And uh, so this particular day, the weather had been real bad. And we couldn't get to the fields. So we are diddle down around the prison, around the, the warden's house, the, the captains, majors, chaplain. They all live on the property. The laundry captain, the kitchen captain, all these people live on the prison property. At the old prison, new, new modern prison, they don't have that. They only got a warden's house. But at the old prison, they got houses, they got dormitories for the guards, they got all that at the old prison. They call the officer's dormitory the B.O.Q. Well, anyway, uh, old Lord would make sure that one whole guys, that we get a break every now and then because we work so damn hard. And, and Wildcat and Red Rider know for a fact, if you was in one hole with old Lord, your ass was going to work. Ain't gonna be no kind of bullshitting, talking, looking around. You ain't gonna do none of that with old Lord. None of that. You're gonna constantly work. And occasionally, from time to time, uh, he'd give you a break. I, I keep looking around. My neighbors upstairs, hell, they up there arguing and, and for, they're always fighting. They making all that damn noise. I hope this, this microphone don't pick it up. Well, anyway, uh, this particular day, it had rained a lot. I mean, it had been raining all week. So the traders couldn't get out. It was too muddy. So we working around the prison, outside the fence. Then we go to the warden's house. Now, he got a beautiful daughter. And she came out. And she know who old Lord is. And she knows some of the inmates. So she was speaking to guys. Hey, how you doing, Mr. So-and-so? And Mr. So-and-so speaking to different guys. And we had a new guard. He had just started working there. And they was training him with old Lord. I don't know why he want old Lord to train him, but that's who he was being trained by. So he was sitting there with his new uniform on, got his new uh, 38, you know. The girl had on short pants. It's summertime. Now back now back during that era, it wasn't going to be nobody masturbating on the female. You did that to catch daughter. That would have been the last sunlight you seen because they're going to kill your ass that night. There ain't going to be no disciplinary. Your ass going to die. Simple as that. You did some shit like that, they were going to kill you. Probably the inmates in one hole probably going to beat you to fucking death. They, they did not play that. Now, even in the chow hall, in the tea, they used to uh, put salt peter in the tea. That's to slow down, try to slow down the sexual drive, the sexual urge. The shit didn't work. Oh, that fucking they was doing at Rams. It, did, it didn't work that well. But they put salt peter. You could smell the shit. They put it in the tea. And, uh, So we out there, just, it ain't nothing really to do. They just want you to stay busy. It look like you're doing some work. Oh, Lord, no, ain't no hard work to do around the war now. He got a, a yard crew that keep his yard manicured, the leaves raked. You don't need no other inmates over there working. But they just giving us something to do. And uh, it's new guard. He was, and Captain Bad rolled up. And, uh, and he was telling Captain Barrett, he said, that old young girl now, she sure all like these, these bucks. I bet you these old black bucks, I bet they I bet they getting her. I already know it. I can see it, boy. She loves these black bucks. Bad looked at him. Didn't say nothing. He got on the radio. 
bad call signal is 06. He said 06 to 01. That's Wildcat. And Cat answered. Go ahead, 6. He said, uh, Cat, I think you need to get over here. We're right over here in front of your house. I think you need to get over here. Right now. It's important. He said, all right, I'll be there in about two or three minutes. Because we right there by the front gate of the prison. We ain't that far away. So Cat come riding out in, in his in his warden car. He parked the car and got out and walked over to see what Bad want. Bad tell himself. This new thing here, he was talking bad about your daughter. He called your daughter sluts whores. Said these niggas is fucking her and all kind of shit. He don't know that these niggas raised that girl and she know these guys. Boy, Cat went crazy. He got old Lord's whip. He made the man put his gun down, told him to take off his gun belt. Bad got his gun belt and Cat went to whooping his ass with that whip. Hitting the horse, hitting the new guard. He fell off the horse. Cat just kept whooping his ass with that whip. That motherfucker was screaming, what did I do? What did I do? He trying to fit Cat, turn his ass up with that whip. Cat told him, you get your ass off of my prison. Don't you never come back here. Never come back. He told him, say, matter of fact, you can't even leave in this county no more. He said, when we get off of work, when get off of work this afternoon, I'm coming to your house, and your ass better be moved. We don't even want to see you in Brazoria County. You better not even be in Brazoria County. Well, that motherfucker was crying and begging Cat. He ran, got in his old raggedy ass truck, tore his ass getting off of Ramsey Prison property. Well, he, we saw him going on down that highway. Boy, he had that old fucking truck. He was switching gears in that old ass truck, getting the hell away from the Ramsey unit. You know, uh, these kids who lived on the prison property, they were familiar with inmates. They have been around them their whole life. Probably the first thing they could talk or walk, they were they saw an inmate. Because, like I said, inmates worked at their house. Actually raised their kid, babysit their kid, take them to school, help them with their homework. An inmate did that shit. So they were used to inmates. They're not afraid of no inmate. You see them all the time talking to an inmate. Oh, you see an inmate got one of them little kids toting and wrestling and playing with him. You know, if they had perverts in prison back then, but guys didn't know what masturbating on a female was. They, 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 you didn't even try no shit like that. If you got caught, you were going to die. I guarantee you that. You was a dead man. You ain't going to get no disciplinary and say, well, we just going to, like they do now, we'll change your custody because you got a cold 20. Ah, uh, there ain't going to be no cold 20. Your ass going to the morgue, simple as that. Y'all uh, follow me over on Patreon. The link will be in the description. I need my likes. I got to cut this video short. These clowns live right above me. They arguing. This guy and his old lady, they throwing patio furniture and all kind of shit. It's flying off that second floor. And this shit getting on my nerves. I'm going to have to cut this video short. Y'all like and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.